Hi, I'm Russell Jackson. I'm here on behalf of Farm One to do some dishes with Small Hold Farms wonderful mushrooms. I'm gonna actually kick together three dishes with three different mushrooms. Let's talk about lion's mane mushroom. This is so fresh and pretty. It's it's got a puffy, spongy quality. It sucks up sauce like you can't believe. Uh, it can be in, it can be eaten raw, cooked, braised, roasted. It has a flavor that's very seafood esque in the res in the respect that it tastes like crab. Uh, and it also has a high level of medicinal qualities. I believe everything from uh, your heart uh, to uh, your blood and breathing. Uh, it will help improve. I can't. Your brain as well. Oh, it's good for your brain. Oh, that's right. That's why they make tea out of it and and uh, coffee out of it because yep. it's supposed to be brain food. Yep. It looks <laughs> like a brain. It does. And again, it's got a root in basis. Please don't use that. And honestly, we haven't found a good use for it at this point, so it goes in the compost compost bin. We're going to actually slice a little bit of it up uh, and we're gonna do a ceviche. Now, I sealed this up uh, uh, maybe two hours ago. Uh, it is a head of lion's mane mushroom uh, that's got a little bit of our house fermented chili paste. It has a splash of uh, uh, our celery root vinegar, rice wine vinegar that's unsweetened, salt, white pepper, the uh, some marjoram stems, again, my I love marjoram and crab together as a, as a flavor profile. Uh, and then uh, uh, we put it under pressure in the back bag. So, oh, and a splash, splash of tequila. Cause you know, mm. <laughs> ceviche. So, oh my God. So now the lion's mane has kind of sucked up all that good juice. Oh my God. And it, it has almost a, a smoky, elderwood kind of tobacco-y flavor pro, uh, uh, smell to it, which is really great. And I'm, I'm, my perception is is that it probably has a little bit to do with uh, the beautiful vinegars and ultimately sesame oil that I put in there, <laughs> if I could remember. It's so close. Okay, I'm gonna make some simple slices out of that. We wanna make a little bit of, uh, uh, of a vinaigrette uh, for or not necessarily vinegar, but a marinade, we'll call it, for the ceviche. And uh, you can use different citruses. Right now, caracara oranges are, are sort of at the height of their and the last bit of their season. Uh, it is my family's favorite and it is my personal favorite, favorite citrus. Even though you see me throwing those out, the reality is, is that a lot of times we cure those, season them, cure them, and use them for different dressings, vinegars, purees, all kinds of stuff. So I'm putting a little bit of the citrus in here. I'm going to mix in. We make a, a sudachi koshu as well as yuzu koshu and, and a series of other spices uh, that we make in-house and have for years now. Uh, this is a 2018 suda uh, sudachi koshu uh, that we made in-house. And instead of going sort of the more Hispanic route, I wanted to go in thinking of the mushroom and my feeling about it and the fact that it's crab, I wanted to go more of a, an Asian ceviche style. And we're gonna hit it with a little bit of sake. Now you don't have to put sake in there, but I kind of like the idea. And again, we used a little bit of tequila with the mushroom. Right, acidic. We're gonna use a little bit of our Martha's Vineyard sea, sea salt. Ah, New York. Okay, because we're staying consistent with the herb uh, profile, we're gonna just put a little bit of fresh marjoram in this. And of course, when we do garnish, we will finish it with some farm worm flowers and herbs. Yeah. So we're gonna let this sit for a minute before we go to actually 
breaking down ceviche. So I'm gonna, I've got the marinade. I want to slice a nice piece out of this. And what's so great about it is they subdivide beautifully. Extras. So interesting. Wow. And it does. It has this white, crabby, just this really interesting, interesting texture. All right. So we're making some nice, some thin slices. This is our marinated guy. That was compressed and marinated. So different. Wow. Okay. Mm. Mm. I like that. Yeah, that's like super unique. Whoa. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh! I'm getting some of that. Was that sake or tequila you put in? Just a little splash of tequila. Tequila. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit on the back end. Just one on. So we're we're doing this in sort of two similar textures. All right. Wow, that's really cool. Okay. All right. So this is our little bit of our salsa, our Asian sudachi uh, koshu le tigre. Just gonna stack, alternating the marinated mushroom and the fresh, uncured mushroom. I'm gonna add a little bit of sea salt to that. We're gonna add, is we're gonna add some forever back to the tweezer protocol. Just gonna, and again, it's just about making pretty food. Okay. So now, and again, this is like the, the, the simplest of dishes. We just want Color. <gasps> oh, yeah. Want a little color. We want just a tiny bit of texture. Because that's all oh, again. Yeah. Come here. Come here. Now, see, Vietnamese coriander so works with this. Yay. Look at that. You could actually even finish that up with a little sesame seed or something, but I right. love it. Okay. Ah, yay. That's going to be tasty. No good house doesn't make a beautiful amuse. So this is just something that I kind of threw together with actual odds and ends from this restaurant. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is a little bit of a fermented uh, cauliflower puree with brown butter uh, that we finished with a little bit of mushroom puree. Uh, this is our, uh, and I always seem to have gougere dough in my refrigerator or freezer at some place. Um, so this is a uh, Ajuan uh, Gougere dough uh, or pot pastry, pot de choux. Uh, so I'm gonna fill this pastry up with a little bit of this puree. Oh, careful. And um, earlier 
I was talking about making uh, the mushroom confit. And these are actually the trumpets. These are actually the trumpet mushrooms oh, yeah. that we preserved that I will actually dump a lot more mushrooms into this and pre preserve and keep these to use over the next couple of weeks. It's just a little bit of onion. We've got these beautiful mushrooms that we can just put on there. Sort of a little tart. Yum, yum, yum. The King Trumpets hold such an amazing flavor. So you can actually take that olive oil or whatever medium that you're, you're cooking them in and add in fresh herbs, dried herbs, take a garlic head, smash that, put that in there, shallots if you don't like garlic. Again, green garlic is in season. Go to your farmer's market and support them. Um, you can actually even utilize some of the flowers and herbs that you get from your farm one kit, then toss those in there. And, uh, you just have to strain them out uh, when you go to put it into storage. Uh, and this is a beautiful, brown butter mushroom, Gougere. Because the basil would be delicious with this. The classic tortilla española. And for those of you that don't know what tortilla española is, uh, it's a classic dish incorporating potatoes, onions, and eggs. So it's like a massive omelet. Uh, we, in turn, have added tons of different things, and every week we have a series of different tortilla espanoles uh, that we produce. Brussel and jalapeno, spinach and leek, all kinds of different things. Today, because we've got all these great different styles of mushrooms, the first one that we're going to work with, this is a royal trumpet mushroom. It's large, meeting. It's got a great profile to it. Delicious, easy to saute, very versatile in many, many things. can go into a salad to uh, having them roasted and sauteed uh, whole. They hold marinades great. They're great for grilling. You, a lot of times you'll see chefs will cut them in half and then score them and then just saute them with the score side down to make these pretty like little steaks, mushroom steaks. So this is a little bit of whipped eggs. We're gonna season the eggs. A little bit of cypress sea salt. We make our own fish sauce here. Out of our trout bones and our albacore that we bring in from California. So this is a little bit of our gargum style fish sauce that takes us months to make. And again, that's just giving it that unami kind of yum 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 flavor profile. We want the mushrooms to be the real standout. This is a little bit of chenga mushroom powder that we're gonna just put in there as an accent just to give the eggs a little bit more of a mushroom lift. Get that all together nice. I don't wanna beat an awful lot of air into it because I want density to my dish. I've gone ahead and pre-sauteed blue oyster mushrooms. King trumpet, sorry. King trumpet, just to get a little bit of caramelization, a little color onto them. This is some of the potato and leek and a little bit of spinach base that we made the other day. I'm just gonna fold these together now. My oven is currently running at 385 degrees with the fan on, but you know your oven better than I do. Potatoes, leeks, a little spinach. Classically, a tortilla espanol would go into a hot pan or casserole that has a little bit of fat inside of it. Uh, at the restaurant, at this restaurant, because we're doing a different style of service, we've had to kind of figure out more efficient ways of producing beautiful food for you to take home. So we're actually doing it, cheating it a little bit. We're gonna use a spring foam pan that we've preloaded with a little paper, a little parchment paper, and then sprayed it. I love white pepper with potatoes, mushrooms, and it's, gives just a little bit of heat and balance to the dish. And it'll let that fish sauce and all those ingredients work really well together. My oven's ready. My pan is ready. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up carefully. <laughs> you say that, but then 
You never really do. And that was for this six inch spring form, seven eggs. And about a cup, cup and a half of potatoes, mushrooms, onions. All right, that's gonna go into the oven with the fan at one for approximately 35 to 45 minutes. So, from the magic of television, this is our terrine, our Española, that little spinach, egg, mushrooms layered in there, uh, a little green garlic, uh, very simple, very lovely. I literally eat this every week. I eat it for dinner, I eat it for lunch, I eat it for a snack. Uh, and anyone else that buys it realizes how incredibly beautiful it is and layered and flavorful and healthy it is. Um, so we're ecstatic about utilizing it. And we in turn will also serve this with a little bit of fresh herb salad. Yeah. <laughs> I love that dish. It's it's part of, so we did, reluctantly did the whole restaurant week thing for New York, which was, oh my God. Um, but we created the Espanol for that. And, and so many people came by and loved it so much that we ended up keeping it on our menu. So it's now part of our soup store daily menu. Um, uh, and you can order just a slice like this and get a little salad and a little sweet treat, uh, or you can uh, order an actual whole Espanol in there. We, I think we charge uh, varying somewhere around $34 for a whole uh, nine inch piece. Uh, it's super thick and rich like this. And honestly, if you can eat a whole one in three seatings or four seatings, I'll be impressed. <laughs> No, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's easily, if I take one home, we eat off of it all week long. And cold, hot, room temperature, it's always great. Let's talk about the blue oyster mushroom. Now, this, can, this dish or this technique can actually be substituted with any of these dishes, uh, which is great. So you could do this dish uh, with the... Uh, trumpets, you could do it with the lion's mane, uh, uh, just different flavor profiles. Uh, it, the dish was actually created for mayatake, but we had and were gifted these beautiful blue oyster mushrooms. What's great about these and like the mayatakis is usually you get a little piece of the root in, which leaves it whole. So what I actually did was I oil poached tied off the mushroom and I oil poached it. So now oil poaching, preserving mushrooms, it's actually a really, really easy method. Uh, it's one of those things in preservation that you can do. And as we've learned, and a lot of people have had to learn throughout the pandemic is, is to not create any waste and to utilize as much of every scrap and product that they have in their hand and to keep it for much longer than we would normally if we were processing uh, if we were processing in our restaurants like we would normally normally be doing with the same type of volume. Um, this restaurant was predicated and built on efficiencies uh, and making sure that our waste is as, as small as possible. Uh, and that's sort of our California nature. Uh, so one of these great things, and my, my good buddy Douglas Williams, uh, the chef and owner of uh, Mita, uh, or Mita in Boston, uh, talks about uh, preserving mushrooms. And uh, the, it's the simplest, easiest thing that you can do. Uh, these mushrooms uh, were essentially boiled, <laughs> braised in uh, uh, fat. And that fat can be duck fat, it can be olive oil, it can be canola oil. Uh, this is a, a duck fat and olive oil mixture. We put in a, a little bit of onion, uh, a little bit of whole garlic, uh, and we just let it come up to heat at a very low temperature until the mushroom starts to boil. Once it stops boiling, then we just pull it out and let it settle. It's beautiful. And if you cool that oil down with the mushrooms in it, 
You can put that into a sealed container and put it in the back of your, your refrigerator. And my belief is, is he says you can eat it up to a year later. Uh, and we've done this and we've used them months later and they're beautiful. As long as the, the mushrooms are submerged completely and it's just oil on the top. The oil might grow a little funk on it, but just scrape that off and it's all good to go. Uh, but today uh, we're gonna make a really, really simple dish. I've gone ahead and braised these. I've let these cool, let this cool. And what I'm going to do is pop it. I can do this a couple different ways. I think the easiest way, especially for today, is I have this beautiful convection oven that I love. Uh, it's a, an Italian Technica uh, uh, combi oven that uh, is the first of its kind here in New York that we were really happy and pleased to get. It's sort of like a jet engine on steroids. So I'm going to just pull the tie and it's, it's already full of fat. Uh, I'm gonna season it a little bit. And again, because the cypress sea salt is flaky, we're just gonna hit it with a little bit of sea salt. And I'm gonna pop this in the combi oven and let it start to crisp up naturally. Uh, if we had my atakis, we would literally do the same thing. We may not even pre-poach them. We may just coat them with uh, some clarified butter, a little olive oil, some seasoning salt, and pop it in the into the combi to crisp up the mushroom. So we'll pop that in there. It smells so good. What we're going to make is a little bit of tea that's going to complement that mushroom. I've gone ahead and pre-roasted potato scraps, onion scraps, and mushroom scraps together. I've got a little tea press here. I'm going to just load my tea press with my, my burnt potato herbs. There's Again, there's onions. There's a little garlic. There's a little green garlic in there. We want fresh mushrooms. Put all of that inside. And on the stove top that you can't see, I am warming up, ooh, fresh mushroom. Uh, I'm warming up some vegetable broth. Now, all of our vegetable scrap that we produce here in this restaurant, we save. Uh, onion tops, onion bottoms, carrots, leek, celery, anything uh, from a vegetal standpoint uh, that we can utilize. Uh, we sometimes ferment, sometimes we don't, and we make a vegetable broth out of it every day. And that is one of the primary ingredients that we use in this restaurant, which is really kind of cool. The broth has been infused with a splash of dried vermouth and the mushroom is cooking. We're ready to make the tea. We're going to set the plate up. I went ahead earlier and made a little bit of fresh herb and that's green garlic, a little savory, a little parsley, uh, a little bit of celery vin vinegar. Uh, we utilize a company and again, we're all about local and sustainable. Uh, and again, the, I the idea of California cuisine is the precursor to farm to table, uh, 100 mile cuisine. So we try to use as much local product and then we offset uh, 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 our carbon footprint and bringing California products in by utilizing as much local product as we can. So we're getting product like Farm One and Small Hold that are local to the city that offset our carbon footprint from bringing materials like the Yakupi beans in from California. And then all of this local produce is from farms like Norwich Farms, uh, that's a local upstate farm. So we've got these beautiful marinated beans and they're gonna be the basis for our mushroom. Love that. So this is my, one of my all time favorite ingredients. That is spring garlic, uh, young spring garlic. And it's amazing that it's actually available here on the East Coast, East Coast right now. Never seen it at this time of the year. Surprise! So, straight out of the oven. It's beautiful. It's brilliant. Yeah. Crispy edges. I'm going to pile that on there really nicely. 
Again, this is the vermouth based. Uh, this is a vermouth based vegetable stock that we're going to pour over the freshly roasted potato and mushroom to make a delicious tea. All right. So now we're just going to let that sit. And this is fun because it's one of those things that we can do on table side that, that it's beautiful. Now let's find beautiful herbs. What do we want? Yeah. So we're going to put and again the, the flavor profiles of some of these are so strong you want to just and that's the nice thing about the fact that we can put just a few of these on the plate and have such an incredible impact visually and flavor wise. All right, we want just a little green garlic ring on there. Dun -dun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I like that. Oh, purslane. Yeah, purslane. And purslane as a ingredient for this dish is absolutely flavor, flavor and texture wise, perfect. I love purslane. Yeah, simple, beautiful. And then you have the tea. <coughs> Nicely infused. And then you come to the table and you'd say, <gasps> And it comes with a beautiful burnt potato tea. We're pouring that right over top, allowing it to permeate the mushroom a little bit. And yet, float the herbs and a little bit of the finish.